course, you've heard about iOS XE, you've heard Catalyst 9000, you've heard DNA this, DNA that. Uh, so what they wanted me to do was just kind of give you guys an update, a recap, uh, and really talk about kind of where we're going. Uh, you know, we've said multiple times that it's a, it's a journey and, you know, we're on this journey. So it's also like, okay, valuable to understand where we are on the tonal journey. And specifically, they wanted me to talk about kind of the platforms, uh, routing and switching. Uh, we have a lot of discussions about wireless. Um, but what's changing on the wired side? And then how does uh, the platform and the software, iOS XE, actually make some of this possible? So I try to put all this together, and I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, I also uh, have a, a demonstration, um, and I'll try to kind of go through it. But depending on questions, you know, and then uh, if I have time, I'll, I'll give you guys a nice little preview. Uh, so again, you've, of course, heard of Catalyst 9000. We've been talking about it for some time now. Um, the new introductions, in fact, I, I had um, a brief uh, tech field day on Catalyst 9600. Uh, that's the new modular chassis that we have. Um, and, and I've said this before, but it, it's always kind of fun. Uh, the numbers were chosen for their predecessor, so it's uh, the we also have the new uh, Catalyst 9200, uh, which is the successor to the uh, 2960, or the CAT 2K. So 9200, 93, 94, 95, 96. Uh, so it's just one big family based on a common ASIC architecture and a common software architecture. Um, now, I know you guys have built a lot of networks. Uh, you know, your, your listeners uh, build a lot of networks. So you've dealt with the struggle of working with different platforms, different software versions. Uh, so this is just one of those, it, it's simple, but it is extremely powerful to just have one family uh, that behaves the same. Uh, and then the difference is just scale. How big is the ASIC and how big is the CPU and, and these types of things. Uh, now, we've been quite busy. This is a busy slide. I'm not going to go over each and every point, but uh, big things are things like uh, 90 watt UPoE plus. So this is the uh, 802.3 BT standard. Uh, and I don't know uh, if it's caught on uh, yet in, with some of your viewers, uh, but imagine uh, being able to power like entire uh, computers just off of a PoE port. In the old days, it was just like, okay, I could do an access point or a phone. Uh, then it was, you know, I could give some extra power maybe to a monitor. Now it's, I can power my entire laptop and I can have a phone off of it. And uh, there's a lot of other really interesting cases on that. Um, just talked about the 9600, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, 25 gig, this is getting very, very large. Uh, it's very similar to the multi-gigabit Ethernet story. Uh, but being able to, you know, get beyond just 10 gigabit Ethernet using the same exact fiber that uh, you would traditionally only be able to do 10 gigabit on. So more than double the speed on the same uh, cable. Uh, one of the questions we've had for a while was being able to do wireless uh, and uh, wired off of a single switch. Uh, so this is an integrated capability on the Catalyst 9000 series. Um, and I mentioned 9200 a moment ago. Uh, this is more of your entry level, but uh, has, still has that same uh, ASIC and uh, iOS that the others do. Uh, another interesting one was uh, many people were asking us, is there something between 92 and 93? So we created this, uh, and if you remember, the, we had this previously, the 3650, uh, and then we had the 3850. Uh, so this is like a 3650, think of it that way. It's, it's just in between a 92 and a 93, uh, but has the same stacking capabilities, just uh, slightly different uh, scale parameters. So that's a lot to take in, I know. Um, but it, again, our goal is to have that common family. So we're even extending that to the wireless. So I'm sure you've had the wireless team uh, talking about the Catalyst 9800 series. Inside the box, it's a UADP ASIC running iOS XE. So it is literally the same device. Uh, and then we've just introduced the uh, Wi-Fi 6 uh, 802.11ax uh, with these Catalyst 9100 uh, APs. Uh, but the, the important message there, again, is that single family of uh, Catalyst 9000. So it was intentionally named that way on purpose. Uh, it's building out the speeds. Okay, now 11AX requires more uplink bandwidth, and therefore I need more 25 gig or 40 gig, and then I need more uh, 100 gigabit Ethernet as well. 
I think it's a very powerful picture. I put that one in there just for that reason. Go ahead. Um, that kind of you know gives you a sense of the new access network. Now the other thing is iOS XE itself. It's actually common between uh, the switches, now the wireless, as well as the routers themselves. Uh, now you know you just had Nikolai talking about SD WAN, so I won't rehash all of the the SD WAN elements. Um, but particularly the, the ISR series and the ASR 1000 series, uh, as well as the software versions down at the bottom. Uh, he mentioned CSR 1000V. Uh, these are running uh, iOS XE. So on a software layer, you think about you know, how does BGP behave, how does IPsec behave. Uh, it's now standardized across uh, the router switches and wireless. And that was all to build up to, um, you know, what does iOS give me, right? And, and one of the other key messages we talk about is uh, programmability, right? It's a modern world, it's a digital world. A lot of your viewers are getting into, um, you know, writing their own programs or little APIs and these kind of things. Uh, so one of the key tenants for iOS XE, so now routers, switches, and wireless, uh, is having these kind of capabilities. So of course you hear uh, zero touch provisioning, you know, this is a, a SD-WAN requirement. It's also uh, very large in, uh, the campus network, I have all these little tiny switches all over through the ceiling, so you need to be able to provision those very easily. Um, but from a day to day, and this is actually now building on to kind of the point I was getting at for assurance, monitoring network operations kind of things, uh, big, big focus on uh, Yang models. Uh, so these are like predefined uh, configuration and operational models. Um, so that you know, not only can I initially automate the whole network, but then get all that information coming back into uh, the DNA system. Uh, so things like uh, model-driven telemetry. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's uh, things like gRPC. Uh, but it basically, uh, instead of in the old days, I would with SNMP, I would go out and I would ask like, what is your CPU? What is your CPU? What are your link statistics? Now the device will actually dial out or dial in and uh, you know, give the so-called real-time key performance indicators, right? So it's, again, it's a small thing, seems like a small thing, but it's actually uh, extremely revolutionary. And if you think about the future of uh, monitoring and operations, these are key capabilities. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, you know, Cisco makes some great things, but maybe you know, I, as an as a individual user, have already written my own cool little script, my own cool little program. Uh, so we also support application hosting and uh, Onbox Python so that, that the individual users can uh, do their custom-built uh, monitoring. So like I said, <clears throat> that was just a recap to kind of get you on to talking about uh, assurance and analytics. And even there, uh, you've heard a lot of this from Cisco, uh, again, within the construct of DNA Center. So you hear the words assurance, intent-based networking. Um, it's really big data. So I think you guys know these things. I don't want to uh, go over it all again. But you, you get the point. I've got the data now. Now I can begin to actually uh, do some kind of analysis and, and react to it, moving the, the industry from reactive to, to truly proactive. Uh, and it's only as you reach this milestone, this, this point in the evolution, that you can become a, a proactive type of environment. So, uh, and focusing it on the wired piece, we've actually done this, we've already delivered assurance, uh, and a big, big focus for the right reason has been on wireless. Most of us are connected on wireless, so naturally uh, I want to see that. But then it was kind of the question of, well, what about wired, you know? Um, what are you doing about wired? You have all these amazing things on wireless, now I need some cool things uh, to go on the wired with it. Um, and the part I wanted to call out on this particular slide and the next few are uh, the client view. It's not like even uh, uh, monitoring is new. We've been doing monitoring for 20, 30 years, right? But it tends to be the network. What is the, the switch CPU? You know, what is the uh, link interface? And you don't, you know, maybe I know the, uh, up down of the client port, but I can't really tell you what the client is ha is happening to the client and then those things. Uh, or if I do, I must go to multiple tools and I have to like look at these syslogs and I have to go log in to the Cisco ICE and then this and then that. Uh, the whole point is bringing all that together in one place and I can see I can see how the network is behaving, I can see how the client is behaving, and then I can see uh, how the application is behaving. So in fact, that's what this slide is, lots of information. 
uh, the part I really wanted to draw attention to was again the wired client element. That's the uh, the new addition, the incremental uh, evolution of it. Um, of course, we're looking at the network. So we say things like uh, device 360. That's a network device. So I can tell you his CPU. I can tell you uh, his TCAM usage and those things. Um, and even just having clients, we've had that, but it was very focused on uh, the wireless piece and all of this uh, has been there. They've added some amazing things like this uh, intelligent packet capture, uh, proactive monitoring with sensors and uh, so I'm per sending probes, right? And I can tell you uh, the sensor is basically pretending to be a client. So instead of paying the money as a customer to, to buy a wireless device and test my wireless, the antenna in the AP is doing that testing for you. Uh, yeah, please. You're doing anomaly-based packet captures. That usually means that you have a rolling buffer. Correct. You, yeah, it's a finite buffer. As soon as you have some triggered alert, you will just That's go correct. back in the past, basically. That's right. It's, 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 you know, I've forgotten the exact number of packets, but yeah, it's, it's a rolling finite buffer. But it, it also, um, I can tell you precisely what happened, and, and it's a packet capture. So it is like, you know, per event, per packet, time stamped, and, and those things. With, is it, yeah. with, with full VLAN headers, everything radio tap? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Is it possible easily to extract that? So I'm doing an investigation. You can export I thought, it, save it. And now I need to collect some evidence. Absolutely, absolutely. You could build reports. We're a little off topic, but there, even some of this is like uh, uh, building summary reports. So I want, uh, there's another thing on the previous slide uh, one, two back, uh, talks about time travel. So again, we're kind of off topic. This is more overall assurance. Uh, but we even uh, save the event history for 14 days. And all the records, I can tell you exactly which clients, so I could have an investigative report. And then as far as the, the uh, intelligent packet capture, because it's time stamped, and I can have it exported off and say, look, at this time, this is precisely what happened. And then we're going to, back on topic, uh, extend that sort of capability to the wired clients. Okay, uh, so perfect going on to the next thing. Again, there's a lot of elements here, but uh, the things you would expect, troubleshooting stuff, network availability, network visibility, this is about the network stuff, and this is gonna come from any uh, solar winds, HP OpenView, uh, but what's really unique here is the client monitoring and the application visibility, uh, because this is really where the switches and the routers are doing that streaming telemetry. They're giving you information in real time that, hey, uh, Sean Wargo, my name is logged in, and I'm on port number 12. Here are the link statistics on port number 12. You know, I, I used AAA to log in. I got a DHCP address uh, in a time event uh, sequence. Now, I know these are a lot of slides, so the, the whole thing I was trying to do was kind of focus you in on the most interesting things. There's a lot of things. Uh, but I, again, was repeating that I think the most interesting things and what I think of wired assurance is the client. Um, so we do things like uh, IPT, IPDT, it's short for IP device tracking. So it's things like your ARP, your DHCP. Uh, this is very uh, common. Uh, but no one has used it from a visibility perspective. I have this wealth of information that's happening on the switch that's first talking to the client. Why not expose all that? I can tell you precisely when each of these events happens. Um, again, DHCP authentication, this is an outcome of this, uh, but it's very, very powerful. So, so when Sean opens a ticket and says, my network is not functioning, and you spend the next two hours explaining to him why it's not a network problem, it's because his uh, you know, Windows application wasn't working correctly. Uh, and he, but you can see it from the client perspective as well as the network perspective. Well, that uh, means that you're doing sort of like the packet inspection per port? Deep packet inspection is one element of it. So the uh, application visibility and control, and I can see uh, you know, precisely which flows from uh, you know, your source address to a specific server, I can see which protocol you're on. Uh, but in this case, it's multiple events. Uh, this is where the slide actually helps make a little more sense. It's, um, when we talk about assurance, it, the, one of the things that I commonly talk about is correlation, right? And, and I made the description of I had to go to ICE, and I had to go to my syslog server, and I had to go to my NetFlow collector. 
because all these elements are coming into DNA Center itself, it's correlating those. So some of it is just coming from NetFlow. Some of it's just coming from IP device tracking. Some of it's coming from ICE AAA. Uh, For example, the DHCP process, uh, you need to know which kind of packets that were exchanged. Like correct. So that's the, the device tracking here. So the switch is actually running this on the switch port. And then he's exporting that device tracking information to uh, <coughs> DNA Center Assurance. I have a question to that. When I saw this the first time last year, yeah, I immediately thought there is also a good security use case. I know it is focused on performance, yeah, but uh, with the device tracking, just making an example, if you are locked into one port, that's usual. If your uh, username is showing up on 50 ports, mm -hmm. it may be something uh, fishy on it's a, it's a malware or something yeah. trying to spoof you all have the ports. also sought to put there are some capabilities regarding security focus, maybe some dashboard and things like that. Into Absolutely. The product. Absolutely. So, and, and, you know, when we talk about these, uh, the KPIs, like you said, it, it does tend to be performance. Um, but when they talk about the uh, event viewer and the onboarding analytics, it actually is more on the security side. And there are alerts that will tell you, like MAC address flapping. Maybe it's not even a, a bad guy. Um, somebody connected a hub and I'm seeing flooding packets and it's uh, just a Mac move notification. Uh, but I agree with you and, and we have alerts for a lot of these and they're just going to keep adding more. It's a very good idea, absolutely. And I will say that even the um, authentication failure and, and uh, like DTP snooping, uh, dynamic ARP inspection, uh, these are considered security, first top security fun functions. Sure, rogue DHCP servers. Absolutely. Not a good thing, yeah. And, and my real message is simply that uh, there's a much tighter integration now between the switches and routers and the information. They already have this information, and you see it on the, on the command line, uh, but then exposing all of that to the uh, DNA Center Assurance. That's, that's really what's new and interesting. Which is a good example of this. Uh, it's kind of busy. Uh, some of the things we've already had. So what I did was I tried to just give you a cute little color. Blue are things we already have. Um, but the, the client focused stuff, and particularly this uh, event drill down, so I can see when they get their DHCP, when they get their uh, AAA uh, replies, um, and then being able to support as well the uh, V6 clients and uh, other capabilities like that. Th those are what are new in the DNA Center 1.3. So I do have screenshots of each one. Uh, I didn't know if I would get any time, and I'm even looking at the clock. Uh, I may not get time to show it live, but at least I have some screenshots. Um, and it's just a quick walk through each one, right? So uh, the event viewer is this element here on the bottom. And in this particular example, they're showing it from the device, when they say network device. So I'm looking at switch uh, C3850, that's his name, right? Uh, but I can see all of the interfaces in real time, and then there's a reason why it happened, how do I get that notification? And then this uh, left to right is that time travel. And then, like we asked about generating reports and uh, these types of things. And it's that 14 day um, uh, list of statistics that the DNA Center maintains. So this one is, uh, again, it seems small, but it's extremely powerful. When we first released, it was just IP addresses. Okay, well, I'm sure that's somebody's laptop or something. Uh, but now, through integrating with uh, the Identity Services Engine, I can actually put Sean Wargo you know, on a Microsoft workstation is located on this particular interface. So it's just you know, increasing the, the accuracy and, and the information that I can use. You mentioned that it will be 14 days. So it is starting 14 days of raw data, and then what happens after that? Is it compressed or crunch? Or it's what you... rolling data. It's even similar to the you asked about the packet capture. Um, several customers, for uh, security reasons and and like you know just uh, audit reasons, compliance reasons, uh, have asked, and so we can export that data. But it, left untouched, it'll just roll over. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. It's a good question, and and many customers are asking that question. Now I feel like a good boy. Yeah, good question. Um, where was I? Uh, the KPIs, and like I said, this will continue to grow. But this is looking at it from the client's perspective, right? And you know, getting the interface statistics, his receive rate, which switches he plugged into, uh, and it's it's unique because I'm again I'm not looking at it just from the switch, and I have this port, 
but I'm looking at it from this laptop and he happens to be plugged into this switch and I can correlate those two relationships, right? Just keeps going, um, and again, I have actual live demo so I can show it to you, but it's, you know, I can show it in a, just a number, I can show it to you in a graph, it's stored over time. Uh, this is cute just from, uh, the reason this is interesting is more, I, I build a topology for you. So I suddenly, you know, I have this information, I'll build a topology for you, and then you can just hover the mouse over it, right? So we're getting to that world now where I can just see, ah, that interface is up and that's its number. If I want to click on it, then I can drill down to that specific interface or that specific client, uh, these types of things. This is the one uh, that we talked about a little bit, and I think this actually is probably the most interesting one for many customers, uh, but it's just what it sounds. It's a sequence of time-stamped events. It puts it in order, right? And then with each one, uh, there's a description of what occurred, when it occurred, uh, and now these are the things that I can troubleshoot and, and resolve. Like uh, DHCP server took too long to resolve, and the little error message, you know, like I said, Mac notifications, it'll tell you uh, precisely what it happened and, and when it happened. So for many customers, this is the number one problem they have and uh, would save them the most amount of time. So basically you're getting um, like the most accurate client um, state without having something on the client itself, but assuming that the port... I don't need a sensor in that you don't particular need thing. It? Yeah. Um, so you're basically reading the port where he's directly connected and uh, see what he's doing. Correct. Um, and all, all events that are coming into me from that port, so the, the, the DHCP snooping, ARP inspection, these things. Have you thought about like doing also um, timing um, things, like you could, I don't know if you can detect it, but you can see the SYN and the SYN ACK, you could tell how fast the client responded. And that would give you like a delay ratio of how fast the operating system at the current uh, uh, So we have pieces of this. It's a very good point. And I think that's actually the next level, uh, where the next natural evolution. Um, and, and pieces are there. What we're doing now, I, I keep talking about correlation. So I am also getting information from the, uh, the ICE. I'm getting information from the DHCP server. So I can see that the packet went out. I, I, you know, I'm snooping it anyway, and I see it, and then I see the reply coming back from the radius server or coming back from the DHCP server. So we already measure that round trip delta, uh, but that's a little different than actual. You mentioned uh, deep packet inspection. You know, um, being able to actually capture that. I was just going to say DNA. DNA assurance already monitors the TCP act transaction, the client server. Uh, client side delay, server side delay, and it displays them all in the application yeah, part. Yeah, one point. I've been the, focused on the client, but there's also an application. Exactly. So those measurements that you said, by taking a look at TCP SINs versus SYNAC versus ACK, it can figure out how long you know there was delay on the network versus how long there was delay on the client, how long this application server, and all of that is broken down for you already in DNA assurance, but on the switches, this wouldn't be supported. This requires like an ASR router to provide that input because it has to be punted to CPU for that complex operation. Mm -hmm. okay. no, very good point. And is this <laughs> the users coming in via the ICE integration, yeah, that you can assign that, yeah, to to user. Just a, just a quick question regarding this, yeah. If you have something like ICE and SGT implementation, yeah, then the port config can change, yeah? Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know, marketing users logging in, different configuration versus admin is logging in. And you keep track of that as well? And you can tell me in the time machine at this point was configured like this? Yes. Uh, so, and, and it's an excellent question all by itself because, uh, and the example that I chose, the screenshot that I chose was the uh, authentication element. In this example, he failed, so it wouldn't work at all. But assuming that he succeeds, uh, then the next sequence that will happen, even before I get onto DHCP, right, then I have to um, give him a, you know, this is the authorization result. Uh, and once I have that, then I have an AV pair. So this is all happening in radius. Basically, it's radius information. It will tell me, ah, Sean Wargo logged in. He is in VLAN, you know, 1021, which is part of marketing. And uh, then he would go on and get DHCP and, and these things. So. It is absolutely what we'll show. Very, very powerful. Cool. Yeah, so a common thing that everybody is facing, you have some clients that cannot do 802.1x with certificate, mm -hmm. and pretty old printer or something, yeah? 
Somebody goes to a printer cabinet, writes down the MAC address, plugs in his laptop, and then the, <laughs> then the map. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. behavior will change dramatically what this client is doing. And if we can capture something like that, that would be super useful. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I've said, right, this is a, an ongoing journey. The, the more we get, the more we're going to keep adding more information to it. Um, but even at this stage, it's extremely powerful. The, the, I, this is the number one problem that people encounter is uh, trying to do dot one x. It's wonderful that I can have this uh, software defined access idea, but uh, how do I actually deploy? And, and it's always you know two customers, two clients. Maybe 100 clients work fine, but these two clients do not work, and I need to stop the program. Yeah. Uh, so this is very, very powerful. Even this event, if you see a lot of FED 802.1x, this is also something where you actually take a deeper look at. Yeah? Correct, correct. And, and you know, uh, the point, you know, talking about the TCP SEN and, and particularly the uh, application view, um, let's see if I can go back. The, the first slide I was showing in the recap, um, no, even further. Uh, okay, this one, yeah. So this picture, I, I was trying to focus on the wired assurance, but if you look at the entire story of assurance, uh, you know, again, it's it's the network device, it's the client, and then it's the application. Um, and to to finish the point, come on, work with me here. No, <laughs> there it goes. Um, keep going. Of course, this is all live on a, on a camera screen. Uh, there we go. Uh, the point I was trying to make was the correlation of the events. And, and in your example, um, I'm also monitoring reachability to the Radius server. Um, so I actually know, and, and more importantly, I can look at it from different perspectives. So in one perspective, I'm just looking at it from the client. And, and he's connected into a port, and he connects out to these different things. In a different perspective, I'm looking at it from the application perspective. And uh, you know, use the example of TCP and SIN. So maybe it's, uh, I want to look at Cisco WebEx. Now that's affecting hundreds or thousands of clients and it'll list off, you know, this application is currently being used by 264 clients. So all 264 are being affected at this moment. And the same thing with the radius. Uh, I can look at the, the, the Cisco ICE and his connectivity and say, ah, you know, again, like the 382 clients are currently using this Cisco ICE and I can see and they're all going to open tickets and say my network is down and you say well it's because the radius server is down that's why it's very very powerful so uh, it looks like I've got only a few more minutes um, and I did show screenshots so I guess I'll skip the demo but any other uh, key questions I was actually thinking about the, uh, the, the vision of the events getting all this information uh, and it seems like a very good case to get info from maybe Stealthwatch and then it gets up to threat grid or threat, mm -hmm. sorry, was threat response. Yeah. So actually you could, I don't know if in the future that's the idea, but it seems like it because you guys would like most probably to put all the ecosystem together. That's right. But we'll be, most probably we'll be like exporting everything and getting you know, threat response and at some point you'll have this, well, Skynet kind of thing, you know, on top of everybody. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to call it Skynet, but uh, we're at least aware of the entire network. Uh, all the networks are connected, and uh, you know, now you're free to like actually address the problem. In the example we just gave, right? Uh, and if I see a malware, you know, I can respond to it and solve it. So, just having this wired assurance is is extremely powerful for for our customers. I know we have to wrap it up, but just one quick question. Sure. I see this great integration across the whole, let's say, enterprise switching portfolio. Yeah. Are you also lean to expand this, uh, maybe to security, Cisco security products, and IoT is already ongoing? Yep. <laughs> and uh, is there something on the roadmap? So the, the security ecosystem, uh, Cisco ICE and StealthWatch are already integrated. Um, firewalls have just come. I didn't really cover it here, but in uh, the, the latest version, firewalls are just beginning to be included. They also will continue to evolve. So absolutely. Uh, and, and eventually the SD-WAN, uh, the ACI data center, the long-term vision is for all of these to increasingly be connected.